Mock is celebrating its 40th anniversary after starting as a catering and logistics business in the 1980s. It has transformed into one of the most recognizable brands in the Middle East. Comes as the property and rental prices in the UAE surge. Founder Hussein Sajwani joins us around the set now. Hussein, thank you for making time in what I know is a very busy schedule as we get to the end of 2022. The Mock's journey has been nothing short of phenomenal over the last few decades. What is the vision that you have at the moment in terms of bringing a bigger diversification into the company given that in the past you kind of lived from property cycle to property cycle yeah it's, it's been interesting 40 years as you appreciate thank you very much for hosting me uh, we have started in the catering we bought insurance company we sold we did a lot of a number of acquisitions uh, today definitely the property company is the biggest piece of the group uh, we have bought roberto cavalli which we're very very proud and is, is growing the company and and, and it's been success uh, going forward still we're going to focus on delivering uh, top quality luxury apartments villas uh, communities to our uh, customers around the world. We are very excited about our project in Miami. We want to develop one of the highest quality products in the world, in the, in the surf side, you know. And uh, we are quite growing in the data center. That's our new baby. Well, let's just expand a little bit on, on, the, on the new baby. Maybe we'll come. We'll, we'll get a house price increase from you in just a moment. Um, the print team will be waiting for those headlines. But the new baby, just how big can, let's say, the overseas size of the property business be and the data business? How big can that be? Are they, are they, is it a billion dollar business? What size can data be? Oh, in data center, we're probably looking at investing more than a billion dollar. Uh, we're looking at Middle East, Africa, and Asia. And as you appreciate, the data center is a very capex-heavy uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So each megawatt costs you about $10 million. So if you want to put 100 megawatt, that's a billion dollars. Let's uh, shift uh, to your bread and butter, which is Dubai property. Uh, I spoke earlier to Zena Risk, and you know, Dubai hasn't really been tested by significantly higher interest rates. How is 2023 going to be for Dubai property? I think Dubai position itself now really, really unique city. And the bad news is that a lot of problems around the world, especially the war in, U in, in Ukraine, and a lot of Europeans are moving to Dubai. Mm -hmm. So we see now a shift in uh, phase two, I call it from the property development between 2012 and 2020. Uh, there was a lot of Middle Eastern coming here from Iran, Iraq, India, Pakistan, all those countries. Now there's a major shift, people from Europe and very wealthy people are coming to, to, to Dubai, making it as a home, bringing their businesses and their offices and their kids and their employees. And I think Dubai is going to continue to grow especially on the high end. We had your friend Mohammed Alabar with us a couple of weeks ago and he said Dubai is still a very good deal. Would you agree with that? Is Dubai a good deal at the top end? I mean, monster price rises. Is it still a good deal? Of course. I mean, if you look at Dubai today, you have two types of product or three. Economy, mm -hmm. which is still reasonable, and the middle and the high end. Yes, is high end. No, 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 no. Yes, is high. Yes, is all in. I'm still trying to get a place beside you on the palms. It's not working out. In the middle, it's still your prices are five, six hundred dollars square feet. You know, we're putting a project in Miami. Square feet are going to be five to six thousand dollars. Just think of it. You know, ten times more. The high end in Dubai today is two to three, maximum three and a half thousand dollars. Okay, and the Bulgari sold at three thousand dollars. So it's still reasonable compared to London, Miami. Today, Dubai, you cannot compare it with all respect to to Cairo or to any you know to those cities. Yeah. So even compared to Istanbul or Bombay, Dubai is very reasonable. You talked about some of the Russians coming to Dubai and helping underpin some of the pricing action in local property. How sticky is that kind of money, though? I mean, isn't this just a one-off? It's kind of similar to the Arab Spring. But Russians are not today 50% of the market. Russians are not tw even 20% of the market. So yes, Dubai have seen influx. I remember the first Dubai boom in 2002, there were a lot of Iranians. Then they disappeared. Then came people from UK. At one time, we had 11 offices in UK sales. And our 80% of customers were from UK. And then that came down. And then came Russian. And then they disappeared. So Dubai is, you know, brings 100 nationalities from Asia, from China. I think the next boom going to be from China. You're going to see a lot of Chinese when China open up. They're going to, they're going to flood in. So 
If the top end of your price is 3000 bucks at the moment and you get $5,000 in Miami, what are you going to build that can close the gap at $5,000? Are you going to build and create something that you can price at 5000 bucks? Is that realistic? My dream would be to build something at 50, not your dream, 50, not your dream, not dollars. your dream, not your dream. <laughs> I want the reality on closing that gap. No, we, we, you know, life is keep. You have to progress, and our our Kabali Couture, I think, is about two thousand dollar, okay. Mm -hmm. And we're really taking the luxury to the top end. You know, every single amenity, facility, uh, you know, the quality of the product, the finishes, we're taking it to the top end. Um, and we, we hope to do better than that in the future. We've had quite a few discussions over the years about uh, regulatory oversight and the evolution of that process throughout. Uh, where does that stand today? Do you think there is room for improvement? And if you could make a recommendation, what would it be on and, and what part of the market and on what issue? If I tell you something, you won't believe it. I know markets around the world, and I've studied markets stretching from China all the way to Los Angeles and Canada and Africa. Dubai is by far, by far the most regulated market when it comes to the off-plan. The amount of detail they have put, the amount of laws they have put, UK, USA, Germany, Canada, those are top economies in the world, don't have it. So they have done a fantastic job, honestly. Dubai Land Department of Korea have done a fantastic job. And they continue to improving it, but today they have done such a good job, the improvement is there slightly. But there is no major thing that they can do on top of that, I think. You're saying if we go back to your comment, which is the next evolution or iteration of this market growth will be from China. It will open. They will travel. They will come. And they are hungry. Which section of the market do you think is going to see the next evolution with the Chinese? Is it going to be the, the, the middle of the market, the upper end of the market, or the economy? Where, where's going to be the next explosion? I think, I think the middle because... The middle the, being... Yes, the middle, because Russian like the high end and the beaches and all that. Some of the European also came very wealthy, focus on that market. I think the middle market, if the Chinese come mostly, my gut feeling is going to be the middle market. So how are you building a strategy out around that? Uh, I mean, are you going to be launching any new projects? Because for a while you were kind of taking a breather. You said we kind of work what we have. Uh, given the kind of demand you're seeing, would you say, you know what, it's time to bring some of those older folders out from uh, the wardrobe and working with that? I mean, you know, you appreciate between 2017 and 19, we slowed down. Market was not great, okay? And that's the best decision we did. So we didn't have to dump inventory just for the sake of dumping inventory. Uh, in the last 18 months, we have really moved forward. We made dozens of launches of villas and buildings. We launched Cavalli Tower, we launched Cavalli Couture, we, we launched Sheik Tower, we launched another tower in, in, in Burj Khalifa area. And we have sold more than a few thousand villas. Let's go left field. Um, there's, no, there's no secret that Dubai has built itself as a, as a hub for crypto. You're building data centers, you're expanding in Miami. Um, when you look at all of the stories around cryptocurrencies, etc., and they were many of the buyers of properties we understand here in Dubai, people who made money in crypto. How does that play in? When you look at these stories and you watch them every morning on cryptocurrencies, what do you think about that? You know, I've seen technology boom in 98. And I, had a, so did I. <laughs> and I had an office in Silicon Valley, and we saw the bust. And then, you know, we saw a couple of other booms and busts, but uh -huh. not to that extent. But that's the market today you need to live with, okay? Of course, 2000 and 2001 was unusual. Uh, you know, people got, sorry, crazy about the technology and overpaid, you know, overpaid for companies which worth probably a billion dollar, 20 billion dollar, mm -hmm. not 10% not more, yeah. 20, 20 times more. And you know, this, the, they're suffering today, the market corrected, but technology is the future. It's still, you know, we are investing in technology, but we're investing in private equity firms, yeah. very large American, you know, fund managers that they've been for 20 years in this business, they know what they're doing. Yeah, you're investing across the board. Just to kind of wrap up our chat, this new democ that you're creating. Is there a chance that you'd be interested to relist it again, uh, given how much you've changed within the business? No, we have no plan today to relist anything. Okay, at least not yet. Yeah. <laughs> sure, short, short and sweet. There's a no, a no on that one. You can come back and tell us when you got the... I mean, it's a bit of a crazy idea not to think about it. But, you know, we've, we've seen wilder things over the past. So. We have indeed. Come back and tell us when you do the next wild thing, what you, what you buy. It could be crypto. I've got a feeling. Hussein Sirswani, the Mac fund.
Carpenter. Uh, his conversation uh, right here on Bloomberg. Plenty more ahead.